After three draws in the group stages, putting them into the last 16, where unfortunately the host nation Germany put them out 2-0. Denmark are away home, unfortunately, from Euro 2024. However, as one of my most requested tactics so far in the past week, I've decided I'm going to bring you the tactic anyway. We're going to show you exactly how Denmark lined up throughout their journey in the Euros. And who knows, maybe we'll recapture the spirit of 92 and we'll actually win the Euros with Denmark. So we'll jump ahead and go to the end of the group stages. So we're comfortably out of the group stages, having won two games and lost one, scoring five goals, conceding four, to finish with six points. We managed to beat Slovenia 2-1, goals from Rasmus Hoyland and Jonas Vind. And then a close-fought victory against Serbia, where we won 3-2. An own goal from Pavlovic, Eriksson and Hoyland on the score sheet, and unfortunately we narrowly lost out 1-0 to England thanks to Jude Bellingham goal. So that means that when we go through to the round of 16, we are facing Scotland. Now, I have a split allegiance in this one, obviously. I'd like to see Scotland do well in a simulation for once, but at the same time, I don't want this video to end too early. So we'll go straight to the next round. So here we are in the 32nd minute. Christian Eriksen swings across in for Jonas Vind to just bullet that header into the corner, and that's how the game ended. We managed to beat my home nation, Scotland, 1 0. And if you look at the stats, you can see it wasn't actually that great a game, but we've managed to make it through. We've scored a goal, we've won the game, we've kept a clean sheet, and that's what it's all about. In the quarterfinals against Italy, Verratti holds onto the ball on the edge of the box to Locatelli who manages to just weave his way in and just smash that pass Schmeichel in the bottom corner one minute into the game, it was not looking good, but Christensen on the left hand side here, just after half time manages to swing the ball in and it's that man again, Jonas Vind, scoring another header, past Donnarumma to make it one each and then in the 84th minute, time dying out, Kasper Dahlberg down the right hand side manages to swing the ball in and Rasmus Hoyland puts it past and that is how the game ended. We've beaten Italy 2-1 in the quarterfinals, we are going to the semi-finals with Denmark. And the opening goal of the game came from the penalty spot as Christian Eriksen slotted past Costa to give us a 1-0 lead before Bernardo manages to get the ball on the right hand side, plays it back in for Bruno Fernandes who manages to just chip that ball in beautifully after the half hour mark to level the scores. However, it took to the 86th minute, Rasmus Christensen down the right hand side for us, cuts it back across, Eriksen just thunders that into the back of the net and we are 2-1 up with minutes left, and again, two minutes later, Christensen through to Damsgaard. Damsgaard plays it right through the middle into Dahlberg, and Dahlberg has made it 3-1, and we are going to the final with Denmark. A nice, convincing 3-1 victory over Portugal there, and we will show you exactly how we get on in the final. And in the final, we're up against England. A Christensen ball right over the top for Dahlberg to put his 1-0 up after 20 minutes. And then Saka down the left-hand side, plays it in and an absolute mishap in the box there. Allows Walker to then switch it across and Bellingham puts that in. It really should have been an equaliser before that moment. But then, 67th minute, Kier to Hoiberg. Hoiberg over to Eriksen. Eriksen through to Rasmus Hoiberg with a lovely through ball and that slotted nicely past Jordan Pickford. And that means we have won 2-1 and we have lifted the Euro final. 1992, Denmark won it and it was a shock. It's been a shock again. 2024, Denmark have won the Euros. Here we are, as you can see, title holders Denmark. Absolutely lovely to see. We'll take a look at some of the team stats. In terms of most goals, we are joined with Italy. We have scored 13 goals. In terms of most clean sheets, we're not on that list there. Fewest conceded, we're not on the list. In terms of possession, we're up there in fourth with 56% of possession. And in the player awards, we'll take a look. Most, most goals, we've got Hoyland, joint second with four goals himself. Most assists, we've got Christian Eriksen down here with three. Uh, most shots, we've not got anybody in the list. Player of the matches, we've got Christensen there with two. Best pass completion, we've got Casper Michael. It tends to be the goalkeepers on this list. Key passes, we've got nobody there. Most tackles won, we've got Christensen with 35 tackles won. 15 more tackles in second place. That is actually a massive, massive difference. In terms of dribbles, we've got Christensen with 27 in fourth place. And Ba with 20 as well. Joint seventh with Andy Robertson. And now we'll move on to the tactic and we'll see exactly how it works. So as you can see, we're lining up in a 3-4-1-2, a 3-4-3, a 5-2-3, whatever you want to call it. This is how Denmark lined up at the Euros, in my opinion. We're going with the balance mentality. In possession, we've got the standard width. We're focusing play down the left and right. We've got the shorter passing. We're playing at the higher tempo. We're working the ball into the box. We're playing for set pieces and we're dribbling less. In terms of the transition, we are counter-pressing, we're countering, we're distributing the ball to the centre-backs and we are rolling it out. Out of possession, we've got the mid-block, we've got the standard defensive line, we're triggering the press more often, we're preventing the short goalkeeper distribution, we're getting stuck in and we are stepping up more. In terms of player positions and roles, we have Schmeichel as a sweeper-keeper on defend, no additional instructions. We have three centre-backs, we have Anderson as the right-sided centre-back, 
wide centre back on defend. Same with Vestergaard on the left. Then we get Christensen as the no nonsense centre back in the middle. Two wing backs, both in support. We have Christensen and Bab. We've got both with run wide with the ball. Two central midfielders in defend. We've got take fewer risk and tackle harder because for me, Norgard and Hjordberg just sat back. They didn't really go forward too much. They just sat back and provided that defence for the back three or back five. Eriksson is advanced playmaker on support with Rome from position because he was absolutely everywhere. We've then got Hoyland up front as a pressing forward on attack, just set to stand instructions, and then we have Vind as the advanced forward on attack. So there we have it, that's how I interpreted Denmark played at the Euros in their four games that they played. As always, leave a like, comment down below any other teams you would like to see me do this for, subscribe, and as always, I will see you next time.